Hey, what's up, guys? Craft Farms here. Welcome back to Edgewater, Saskatchewan. We are just finishing up here with the last of our tillage with the uh, Great Plains field cultivator. Uh, we are up here on field 10 with our last couple passes here. And we're going to go ahead and get this finished up and then uh, get this guy back to our farm so we can get the uh, cultivator washed up and put back into the shed and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this hooked up right away to our anhydrous toolbar and we're gonna start putting some gas in the ground and uh, get that job done so we can uh, get some tractors put away and let them rest for the winter. So, we got a nice little drive back to our farm here. I think instead of me going all the way up north, I think we're going to head south this time. Go south down towards the uh, dairy farm here, or the cow farm, I guess I'll say. I don't know if it's really set up for dairy or if it's more geared for uh, beef cattle, but I do want to try and get... Uh, you know, kind of work our way towards uh, running some cows at some point or another. Um, when we get to that point, we're probably just going to run some uh, Angus cows, run some beef. Oop, that edge is very rough there. So let's kind of hang out... Uh, in this spot for now, I guess. Let's see if I can get this HUD back on. I gotta bring up our map here. Okay, this is my turn right up here. We'll shoot across here, and then we'll head back up north a little bit to the yard. And uh, we're probably going to just drop this up by the shop. Um, I did have the uh, toolbar sitting up in front of the shop. Uh, had it gone through and greased and just checked over, make sure it's field ready. Uh, and it's currently hooked to the 4755, so what we'll probably do is we'll probably drop this cultivator uh, over by the shop and uh, kind of over near the pressure washer and we'll just play some musical tractors and swap this over to our toolbar and uh, put this on the 47 to put it back in the shed. No worry about uh, cleaning it up and putting it away at a later time. Because we're going to go ahead and jump straight on into our anhydrous. I did get our anhydrous tank filled as well. So that's ready to go. Just got to hook it back up. And uh, then we'll be ready to roll. And... Uh, we're going to head up to field 48, or sorry, field 28 first and start up there. Um, just because it's our further field for our corn. So we're going to go ahead and just start up in that and get that field done and out of the way. Uh, hopefully we can do it with a reasonable amount of anhydrous, not anything too super crazy. Okay, 
and here is our turn. I did get the spreader and the uh, international put away. Uh, got both of them cleaned up and uh, had maintenance done on them. Um, during maintenance on the international, we did find a couple of issues. Uh, it looks like we are going to probably have to um, end up pulling the radiator. It uh, looked like it was kind of starting to leak there at the end, but we'll worry about that as a winter project. Um, we aren't going to worry about trying to fix that right now. We aren't going to need that tractor until spring again uh, at the soonest, if not until fall. So, uh, And I did, as you guys can see, I did get the two wagons hooked together and uh, parked over there. And then I opened the uh, traps on them. Oh, I guess it didn't stay. Um, but got them parked over there, so then they'll they will be ready this spring as well. Hmm, interesting. Apparently, the jack does not sit above the ground. Well, that's neat, I guess. Well, as long as it stops rolling. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to drop the toolbar and get this tractor pulled out of the way because we're going to hook on right away. And I'm not going to bother hooking this tractor up right now. We're just going to move it over here off to the side out of the way. And then we'll jump back in this guy and we'll go ahead and get hooked up. So that way we can get on out of here and get rolling we got a lot of anhydrous work ahead of us with uh, field one here so definitely want to try and get things done even had that lined up perfect I don't think I could do that again alright let's get this guy folded up and we're going to swing over here and hook on to our tanks. Should be good there, I think. Yes, perfect. Get that and our hose hooked up. And... Uh, Let's get on out of here. So we got 15,140, I'm assuming, liters. I don't think it's registering as anything else. So we got a fair amount of anhydrous on us. We'll see how far it gets us. pH value lime application? Hmm. I'm wondering then if this just puts down pH. If that's the case, then, huh, we, uh, we did not need to spread lime on our fields. Well, that's interesting. I have, I, this is my first time messing with this anhydrous applicator uh, overall and with um, the precision farming so I'm not entirely too sure of just what uh, just what this does if anything we can always change it and we can use this to put down fertilizer uh, I guess if nothing else but or, if it does work, well, we will go and we'll hook back on to the field cultivator, and we'll just cultivate these fields under. So 
Let's find out here. Okay. So it shows that this is going in addition to our pH value, but it's showing red. So let's unfold this here once quick. And drop it down. dust is absolutely ridiculous. Okay, so did that? Okay, so it is working for our nitrogen. So we are good there, thankfully. I was about to get very, very frustrated. But we are in the clear. We are good to go. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. And that's exactly what we need. So, all right. Let's get this over to the field that we actually want to be working on. And get rolling. shoot out before that pick uh, van whatever it is before that vehicle gets to us now I'm probably not gonna make a course play court well probably should just as well just so we got it We'll uh, make a course, because I'm probably going to use a fair amount of course play on field one there for this, because of just how large that field is. I'll do some myself more towards the end, but for the start, we're just going to let course play do its thing. So, we are going to go ahead and get this guy unfolded again. We're going to bring up our GPS auto width. Okay. So, 11.6. So, we're going to just bring it down to 11 to automatic. Okay. So, now we got to set this to where going to actually only go on field 28 okay generate close that perfect now we're gonna hop in here and we need to so this is the BB TB 37. B T B thirty seven gas bar eleven M. Okay, and then save the course under that F twenty eight. And then we can get rid of it. Perfect. So we'll drop that down, switch back to that. And we're going to bring this dust scale down a little bit because it's absolutely ridiculous. And then, we're going to start putting down some anhydrous. Okay, so now we have it way too low. But that's okay, because we can fix that. We're going to bring down our cruise control. Now 
let's bring our dust back up. There we go. That is what we want. Perfect. And we are finally putting some anhydrous in the ground. It only took half the video to get here, but... Ah, uh, well, such is life sometimes, I guess. Now, I'm probably going to leave the HUD on because without it off, I have no way of knowing how full we are, but it does not look as if we are really using all that much. Some areas a little more than others. But I think, if we look here, I think this field... Oh no, this field is completely red for nitrogen. Interesting. Well, we are not using near as much as I thought we were going to. Uh, I kind of thought that it would go a little bit faster but that is a-ok -okay with me kind of saving us a little bit of money so now beans that we have such a long train so to speak uh, we are going to go around three times with the toolbar just to give us a little more turning room with having that tank behind us And then we're going to go ahead and line this up with the edge of the field. And that's going to be what we base the rest of our passes off of. Now, this is the first time I have used an anhydrous toolbar since I don't even know when, to be honest with you guys. Um, I mean, they just haven't really been all that big of a thing. Um, I know these models came from, I want to say, FS-17. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure they were in 19, for sure. I'm not sure which game they originated in. Now eventually, whenever we continue to purchase land, if we buy field 29 here, we are just going to take out this grass strip and just combine them. Might as well, course play always wants to combine them anyways uh, when you're making a course. And I mean, it's... If we own both the fields, it's kind of dumb to keep them separated by that tiny little bit there. I mean, it. we might as well just have at it and combine them. It's probably going to be something that we do a lot of on this map. Um, just because, I mean, there's a lot of places where it just makes sense. You know, like with uh, Field 10 there that we got, if we were to buy... Field 8 and Field 5, we could combine the three of those together and make one big field. So, I mean, we're probably going to be doing a fair amount of that on this series. Um, just because, like I said, it's, it's just something that we can easily do. We're just going to follow this line up, and we're just going to square off this edge of the field here. We might as well. I do like how when you lift it, your gas kind of goes away. And then as soon as you drop it, your gas comes back. Very well done. 
Um, very, very well done. I really do enjoy how this is set up. I like the attention to the detail. I mean, you wouldn't have gas part, you know. I mean, you wouldn't really see the gas fumes in real life either. But if you were to see anything, you're not going to see it directly behind your toolbar. You will see it kind of lingering back just a little bit. I'm not sure about quite that far back, but um, still very nice nonetheless. Very well done added touch. Perfect. So yeah, we definitely are not going to have to worry about running out anytime soon. Um... <laughs> whatsoever. I'm not sure if it would be different if we were to plant the crop and had this set to the side dress uh, setting or not, but I mean, our level definitely is going down. It's just not going down all that awfully fast. I would like for it to kind of drop a little faster, but that's something to do with uh, precision farming here. Not quite so much to do with uh, the map or the applicator itself just kind of how uh, just kind of how precision farming is running it Ooh, and I turned way too sharp there that's my bad yeah we definitely need this extra pass here for turning this monster around. I'm going to go ahead and just lock onto our GPS line. This is actually kind of a relaxing job. It's almost uh, on par with uh, running air seater. When you don't have problems, anyways. If you have problems, then it's a nightmare. But if you can run without any problems, then you are home free. Thankfully, uh... When I ran our air seeder last fall, I mean, I only ran it for a day, but uh, thankfully did not have any problems, no plugs, nothing. It was just smooth sailing, uh, which was very nice. I was very happy for that. We're going to get this big guy... Turned around here. Perfect. 
We just got to do a little bit more down at the other end of this field. And then it's smooth sailing from there. It's always opening up the field, getting started. That's a bit of a pain to uh, get done. But once you get it opened up, I mean, especially once we get over there to field one, where it's going to be long passes, it's going to definitely... Uh, definitely be easy going once we get it opened up it's just going to be getting around that field a couple of times that's going to be the hassle and i think we're actually just going to leave this end because it's really not too terribly bad turning down on this end. And we've only got a couple of passes in this small portion that we've only got two headlands on, so really not going to worry about it too terribly much. I think this would actually make a better thumbnail picture here. See if we can get the right angle. Turn our dust down a little bit here. There we go. And I think that's... Let's go up one. No, I think right about there is about perfect for this uh, toolbar. Yeah, we are definitely putting down nitrogen, so that's good. I'm glad that it is actually working correctly. When I saw lime application, kind of got a little worried there. But I think, I'm not positive, I think this thing is supposed to be kind of like, kind of have the same effect as lime, uh, where it, adjust the pH value, but I think I'm not, don't quote me on this, I could be completely way off, way wrong, but uh, I think with the anhydrous add-on mod in, um, when using it with precision farming, I think that changes it to where this puts down nitrogen and acts as fertilizer. Like I said, I could be way off and completely horribly wrong. Um, I would have to go back and reread on the anhydrous add-on mod uh, on the description of it, but I believe that that is uh, what it is. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead, I'm going to shut this timer off, we're just going to go ahead and finish this field because we don't have all that much left and uh, we only had a few more minutes on the timer anyway so we're just gonna say screw it we're gonna go a tad bit longer on this video here today and uh, we're just gonna get her done Ooh, let's not wipe out that fence definitely putting it down at a good rate anywhere from about 150 to 200 gallons a hectare is what it's saying up there in the top all I'm caring is that our field is green on pH and green on nitrogen that's all that really matters to me I would uh, much rather see it green than red 
is the uh, better that we keep our pH and nitrogen values up, not only the better our yields will be, but also the better our environmental score is going to be. And uh, the better that our environmental score is, the more of a reward or bonus that we get uh, when it comes to selling our grain or anything produced you know out of those fields such as let's say uh, fertilizer or not for such as straw you know making bales off of it uh, like we had happen with our flax straw bales there um, and while we're here let's take a look so our environmental score went up a point to 61 um, we'll see maybe that'll uh, go up as we go it doesn't show me a, a score for each individual field but that's all right so yeah these two fields are going to be the only ones that are going to have nitrogen on them so when it comes to planting our corn we are not going to need to put any fertilizer in our planter, uh, which will be good. Um, we won't have to worry about it then in the spring. The only thing that we are going to have to put fertilizer on is our oat ground, but that's all right. We can just throw some solid fertilizer into our air seeder. I mean... We have the two wagons, one for seed and one for fertilizer. We were kind of planning on it already anyways, so that is not that big of a deal. Oh, boy. Okay. Good. We are going to miss that fence. I was worried I was going to hit that one. But thankfully, we missed it. We were definitely getting a little close. So we just got one more pass after this, and then we're done and then uh, I will off camera I'll get field one opened up and uh, get a bunch of it good to go and I'll probably probably do a majority of it uh, I think what we'll do is when we get to tomorrow's video we'll finish off the anhydrous and then we'll get all of our machinery uh, cleaned up and put away. So I'll probably just leave the uh, field cultivator sit where it's at. And then um, we can take care of that uh, a little bit later. We can do that in tomorrow's video. We'll get... Uh, we'll do a last little bit of anhydrous and then we'll pull this set up into the yard we'll get everything cleaned up get all this stuff fixed and then uh, we can get the toolbar put away we can get the versatile put away and then we'll uh, use our 4755 and we'll get the field cultivator put back in the shed and then we'll get the corn planter and sprayer put back in there and then uh, We'll get our hopper trailer back in, and then we are done in that shed until later on. And then we'll probably also get the uh, snowblower hooked up to the 47. That way we are ready for winter, because uh, then come winter time we are going to be working on selling our grain. So... Plenty of things to do yet before uh, winter hits. And then we got a few things to do over the winter to uh, get ready for spring. Um, with us doing all this field work now, thankfully we don't have to worry about it right away. We don't have to rush in the spring to get it all done. Uh, we can just get ourselves right up to where we need to be in the spring and uh, we can just jump right into seeding. Alrighty guys, that's going to do it for today. 
Hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like. And uh, leave a comment down below. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you guys are thinking of the series. Uh, let me know kind of what you guys want to see from this series in the future. And uh, we can kind of see what we can make happen. Alrighty, guys. I'm going to get back to working. Get uh, some more of this stuff done for us. And then we'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching.